just so you were aware, um, the whole boy is blue, girl is pink thing was a marketing push. And up until the 1980s, most clothing for children was designed to be gender neutral. But during the late 80s and 90s, prenatal testing became extremely popular. Parents wanted to know the gender of the baby before it was born. Marketers figured that you can get parents to buy new clothing every single time they had a new child because of the prenatal testing. So they started to reinforce the boy blue girl pink more and more in the clothing that they manufactured. And on top of that, we put symbolism of boyhood and girlhood on top of these colored symbols. In fact, it wasn't until the mid 20th century that boy blue and girl pink even became a thing. And in some cases, boyhood being associated with pink felt more masculine to some marketing professionals. If you didn't like pink as a child, I highly doubt it had anything to do with internalized misogyny, but rather you not wanting to be told what femininity had to look like for you. Oh no, I'm r Wait, that's Cap. So a lot of people like to use this website for their facts. And on that same website for murders, black people do have a higher number than white people, right? But this table is on arrest, not convictions, that's one. And with my low IQ, I came to figure out that an arrest does not mean you are guilty. That means you're not convicted of the crime. So this table has nothing to do with convictions, just arrests, right? Let's keep going. Now with my third grade reading skills, I was able to understand that exoneration overthrows the individual's conviction. Now we understand how corrupt the police system is, right? So we have to understand that exoneration rates are gonna affect conviction rates, right? Now this website that shows exonerations by race, ethnicity, and crime shows that black people make up at least 50% of exonerations. Oh shoot, I forgot the comment said for homicide. Let me be more specific. Oh wait, it's right here. Oh wait, black people still make 50% of exoneration of homicides already. So if you paid attention, we literally just proved that not only were you capping, but palm colored people actually commit the most crime. For all offenses, 5 million, more than half of the crimes committed or people arrested were white. If what you say were true, I would have been like this. So showering with autism is really hard. And this is what I do to make it easier. Heater, because the change in temperature is very overstimulating for our bodies. I put down a towel to stand on, um, a clean towel, because I don't want to get lint stuck to my feet after I get out the shower that like defeats the whole purpose of the shower. I use some of my favorite towels and washcloths. And this might be when I lose a lot of y'all, but I use a, a galaxy projector. Thermal socks to put on after I get out the shower. Sweatpants and a sweatshirt. Also, this wooden bath mat is really nice because I don't have to worry about getting lint stuck on the bottom of my feet. It immediately dries out. I just put a towel underneath it. And it, I've had it for, this is gonna be the second year and it's never grown any mildew or anything like that. Cause like I said, it dries immediately. Last thing I do is turn the lights off and it looks like this. It's pretty dark, but I have my uh, Davoon. You can't really see what it looks like, hold on. It has different color modes. It's just something nice to look at so I don't have to think about being in the shower. <laughs> so this is what it looks like when it's all done. Potatoes, at the State of the Union, no one was wearing a mask except for one person. Can you guess who? That's right, Bernie fucking Sanders. And not just any mask, he was wearing a KN95, which is much more protective than a surgical mask. That's because Bernie recognizes correctly that COVID is still a serious issue that is killing 500 people a day. Imagine if sharks were killing 500 people a day. And I know it's really annoying, but it sucks that people have just gotten used to it. We've suffered a gigantic national tragedy and nobody has dealt with it. COVID, which is still ongoing, will have repercussions for decades to come. Meanwhile, Joe Biden, the guy who has the job that Bernie should have, is ending the COVID emergency declaration on May 11th. In many ways, this will disproportionately harm poor people and will make treatments like Paxlovid more expensive. But I guess we need that money to funnel back into the military to pop some more balloons, right? Hmm.
Racism is so pervasive it's even made its way into technology. Our tech analyzes the data from society. The data from society is shaped by the inequities present in society. So the outcomes from the technology will, by design, hold, reinforce, and exacerbate the racial biases that already exist. For example, in 2019, a study revealed that a clinical algorithm many hospitals were using to determine which patients needed care was far more likely to grant care to white patients than black patients. Why? Because the algorithm was analyzing past data on healthcare spending, showing that black patients often had less to spend on their healthcare. Now, that's obviously due to longstanding wealth and income disparities due to racism, but the technology has no way to know that. It just accepts that discrepancy in data as truth. Federal testing has found that facial recognition tech works best when viewing white men. As a result, there have been multiple incidents of innocent black people being jailed for crimes they didn't commit due to the technology's misidentification. Even the TikTok algorithm, it's set up to show you more of what you already engage with, thus reinforcing biases you already hold and filtering out content that may offer a different viewpoint. If you regularly engage with young blonde women's content, you'll likely be fed far more content from other young blonde women, suppressing equally engaging and talented creators of color in your feed. This Black History Month, I'm fighting techno racism by shouting out other black cooking creators like Jordan Ramsey and these delicious garlic parmesan chicken tenders. Oh, a rectangular prism. Cancel culture for celebrities is fake. For instance, take Dave Chappelle. Remember his big Netflix comedy special where he was extremely transphobic? You know, where he did a bunch of jokes that only someone who knew nothing about trans people would do? All culminating in him claiming that he couldn't possibly be transphobic because he had a trans friend? But it turned out it was a friend who deleted herself because she was being bullied for defending Dave Chappelle's transphobia, meaning that he is partially responsible for her not being alive anymore. And he wanted to paint himself as the hero for starting a fund for her. And then since then, he has come out against poor people in favor of the ultra rich and also supportive of anti-Semites. Yeah, well, he just won a Grammy for that comedy special. I guess the canceling didn't stick. So all the Dave Chappelle defenders out there, he doesn't need your help, okay? Oh, it's a cake. Girls, it's time to start settling in. It's bedtime. What is your name? What is it? I'm having a hard time understanding you. What is your name, sweetheart? Thank you, Lanice. It's Catherine, just like our housekeeper. Catherine, where is your bonnet? Did you forget it? Do you need to borrow one? Does your mother have a phone? Do I need to call her and have her bring you one? You mean you don't wear a bonnet to bed? Do you wear a scarf instead? I do have a couple of scarves. You don't wear anything at all on your head when you go to sleep. Is that part of your culture? Well, don't expect me to detangle your type of hair in the morning. We're still doing this in 2023. This is from my son's school. This is what was for lunch today. Uh, fried chicken from Popeye's because that's clearly the only thing that we eat. I felt like this was a little racist and I emailed his principal. This is her response. Because she consulted with two of her black staff members, Shamika and Cassinthia, she decided that that was okay. First, I have fried chicken today. And um, then accused me of being racist because, well, I thought it was racist. And when you call out a person not of color and you tell them that they're racist, they like to tell you, no, you're racist, which I can't be, but that's a whole nother issue. Anywho, um, you know, the two black staff members thought it was okay. So that's fine. And then she proceeded to tell me that I was hostile because she feels left out and she feels called out. Um, so I'm hostile, I guess. Uh, I just don't like it to, you know, we only eat fried chicken. We eat a lot of other things, us being black people. And, um, you know, Southern fried chicken is a staple. Um, yeah, no, not really. I get that, you know, we want to honor our black history, but sometimes it's just executed poorly. Sometimes maybe we should just do nothing at all. And, you know, she's not the only one. There's been other instances of fried chicken being served for Black History Month. But it still doesn't make it okay, Miss Fairless. So, you know, let's try to do better because, like you said, our children are watching. 
And just because we gave the Hispanic children nachos and burritos for um, their month doesn't make it any better either. Let's just celebrate Black History Month and not have to have the fried chicken. Let's get it. Hop off a 16 passenger, this is G5. No if one plus one equals two, then you know that two plus two equals three. If someone has a, no, a genetic... No, two plus two is four. I mean, two plus two is four, my bad. If someone has, if one plus one is two, one plus two is three, and two plus two is four, good, we know good. that, right? So we know that um, people who have genetic abnormalities tend to be shunned by their community. They don't like that. Even for example, when I speak with- Wait a minute, that's, say, a, that's actually a really great point. I'm actually so glad you brought that up. It is true that lots of people are shunned for being intersex, e even in cases where there's, you know, no kind of like medical problem with being intersex. That's not a problem with the biological reality of being intersex. That's a problem with society. Shit like this brings the movement down. Everyone's a feminist until there is a spider around.